Barkey, can I get a cheese sandwich and a sarsaparilla? I don't like cheese. That's all right, because you ain't eating. Now, there's something I wouldn't mind sinking my teeth into. James. I hope you don't mind my calling you James. Let me put forth a proposition to you. If you'd be so kind as to advance me enough money to have a decent meal, I'd be... Tender to steak. Well, that much imagination I don't have. Excuse me, barkeep. Yeah. How much are you asking for those delicious looking steaks? Five dollars. Five dollars? Hi, but a uh, reasonable amount to a starving man. So, you want one or not? Two for fifty dollars. Chase, you better learn to add, mister. Two steaks would be uh, ten dollars. Well, not if you're willing to wager two of your best steaks against fifty that I can read your mind. I'm warning you. How so? Pick any number from one to a hundred, and I'll tell you what it is. You're on. You better learn how to add, mister. Men <laughs> lie. Numbers don't, is it? <laughs> oh. Are you happy, Hickok? I thought we went through this already. No, no, you never told me for sure. <clears throat> Men were firing bullets at us, remember? <laughs> so tell me, I'm serious, are you? I have told you before. I suppose I am. And what is it exactly that makes you happy? <clears throat> I don't know. Come on, you must. What are you getting out of life that you want that uh, makes you feel good? Is it the fame? The legend the Wild Bill Hickok? No. The books about you? The notoriety? Come on, it must do something for you. Doesn't do a thing for me, Trace. When they talk about you after it's all over, what is it you want him to say? You want him to talk about how you shot 20, 30 men, how you were the fastest gun around? None of that means nothing to me. Well, what is it then? What do you want him to say about Jimmy Hickok? Well, what I did was right. Well, then you gotta understand something, Hickok. I didn't do what they say I did. I'm serious. I mean, yeah, I took the money, but not that way, but for the reasons that they say. What was that? I don't know. Hungry? first got the job at the holding company, I went over their books to familiarize myself with the way they do business. And I found out for a long time they were making big contributions to Bradley Davis's political career. So? So? <laughs> to begin with, political contributions are no kind of investment for a bank to be making with its depositors' money especially when they're being made to the holding company's largest single silent partner. Secretary Davis? The very same mastermind behind the scheme to bleed the banks dry and blame their collapse on a series of staged bank robberies. <laughs> Be patient. You're an intelligent boy. You'll get it in a second. You I'm not too sure about. Just kidding. So, you're saying that the banks didn't even have any money? A pittance next to what was supposed to be. The bulk was already siphoned into their secret accounts. So the robberies were made to cover up the theft? Mm-hmm. I told you you'd get it in a second. <laughs> Until Chase robs everybody blind. I did what was right. I had access to all their accounts, including Secretary Davis's. And I had a list of all the depositors. I took the money. 
all of it. And I started to give it back to the citizens who trusted the banks with it in the first place. Until I met you. Well? Well, what? What are you going to do? Mount up, get to the Walnut Creek. But they'll kill me, and you know it. Secretary Davis won't take that chance. Well, now that there's a warrant out, he won't have to. See, I'm sure there's plenty of honest citizens that'll be willing to do that for him. You get some imagination, Chase. Hickok, I'm not pulling anything on you. I'm serious, and I can prove it. You're wasting your time, Chase. You say you ride out of Sweetwater? I sent William F. Cody $78.53. Sounded all familiar to you? We're six hours out of Walnut Creek, and then we're done. We can go our separate ways. Hickok, please. What? Nothing, Hickok. Forget it. This isn't your problem. Sorry for all the trouble. I mean, you're right. Just because a few hundred people figure I ruin their lives is no reason to suspect that they'd try to kill me. <laughs> and certainly the Secretary Davis won't mind giving up his political aspirations to move into the territorial prison. And as far as his uh, ruthless partners are concerned, well, I'm sure they'll be equally pleased to keep him company. Now, let's get a move on, friends, or we're going to be late for my fair trial. Well, how about that? A lot of chase. You've done a fine thing here, Mr. Uh... Coulter. Jake Coulter. Yeah. Marshal Steiger himself's due to come back and take custody of him this afternoon. Mighty important to him, I guess. Yeah, so it seems. Deputy, lock the suspect up. You know, you ought to be proud, Mr. Coulter. Chase has done run a whole lot of people's lives. Well, the truth is, is, I did it for the money. Money. Right. Well, that's all of it. Well, <clears throat> I guess I can be going then. Thanks for the memories, Chase. Oh, don't thank me, Coulter. Really, I'll always cherish the time we spent together. Marshal. Afternoon. What can I do for you? James Steiger. Assistant Territorial Marshal. Mr. Steiger, it's a pleasure to meet you, sir. Pleasure is all mine, Marshal. Your deputy told me you've got Mr. Chase. Yes, sir. Right this way. But there's him, sir. Oh, well. Trying all my patience waiting for this day. Smiling again, Coulter. Any last thoughts, Chase? Hmm? Anything you want to tell me for sure? Because if you're lying and you drug us out here for nothing, you ain't going to get much chance to speak for yourself later on. No. That ain't a threat. No offense taken. See, I'm telling the truth. You sure? Yes. Can I go now? Not until we meet Hickok. You don't need me to meet Hickok, do you? You're a big boy. You can handle it yourself. I need you, in case he don't show. Ain't too late to turn you back in. <laughs> 